A mega trend throughout electronic engineering is making our devices smarter. Okay, sure, that's great for new designs. But what about our existing designs? How do we make them smarter without a bunch of hassle? With the help of the Nora W2 AWS IoT ExpressLink solution, we can make our design smarter faster than ever before. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Lucho Diazio from AWS and Magnus Johansson from Ublox and I explore the common pitfalls of designing an IoT device from scratch, the benefits that AWS IoT ExpressLink brings to IoT device design, and how the Nora W2 AWS IoT ExpressLink multi-radio modules can make retrofitting an already existing design into a smart AWS connected device easier than ever before. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Ublox. Hi, Lucho. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. And hi, Magnus. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Emilia. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Excellent. So first off, before we get started, Magnus, give us a brief overview of Ublox. Yes, Ublox is a Swiss company. We make chips and modules for various applications and markets. The company was founded in 1997 as a spin-off from ETH Zurich, and it's mainly active in the IoT space. The company has been doing pretty well with a compound annual growth rate of 15%. And in 22 alone, we sold over 100 million chips and modules. A lot of this revenue is invested back into R&D and into our innovation culture. You can say that Ublox products are standing on four pillars. The first one is positioning, which is our main area where we make and sell GNSS receivers, that's satellite-based positioning te technologies. The second one is connectivity, where we make modules for cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth applications and solutions. And one of these modules is the ExpressLink module Nora W2. Then we also have compute solutions where the customer can run his own application inside the connectivity module. And finally, we offer cloud services to assist the customer using our chips and modules. With all of these products, we focus on two things. One is that they should be easy to use and to implement. The other one is that they should be secure and safe to use. So these two aspects are normally hard to combine, but this is exactly what ExpressLink is about and why we're proud to offer this as a product. Okay, so let's dig into the details of this module. Lucho, what was the motivation to create this module? At the heart, AWS is a hyperscaler, is a cloud company. And for that, we provide the services in the cloud for our customers. But the main element is the data, the data that the customer is supposed to feed into the cloud, to feed their applications, to feed their algorithms. Getting that data in securely is essential for us. So the collaboration with Ublox here was fundamental to create modules, to create uh, hardware components that actually enable this flow of data, seamless but secure, into the customer cloud accounts. So that's why we're here, and that's why we came up with the ExpressLink concept, where we try to really simplify this process and guarantee that out of the box, we give the customer a component that can make this smooth and secure, as I said, never too many times. I have a representation here, a very simplified uh, block diagram, where I show you a typical IoT device, right? So one of these devices that collect the data from the real world and transport it into the cloud. So on the left side, you will see that I put in a pink box, a bunch of sensors, which is where we transduce the actual analog data, you know, the real world information into bits, into ones and zeros. And then we have an agent, which is typically a microcontroller and little intelligent component that runs customer code. And that takes this data from the sensors. And with the help of the module, with the help of the Nora W2, the ExpressLink module, transports the data wirelessly first to a router, a Wi-Fi access point, and then through that onto the cloud via the internet. 
So this is a very typical block diagram. This represents a typical IoT device, an application that can be in so many different industries. But eventually it all resolves down to this kind of simple mechanics here. You might ask, so what's the problem? If this is already a normal way of doing IoT, if you want, if this is something that has been down now for decades, what kind of problems are we trying to address here with specifically with this new module, with the ExpressLink modules and with U-Blocks? And I'll go back to the diagram and uh, run, if you want, a little bit of a step-by-step -step analysis where the friction points are. So starting from the point number one, the typical communication between wireless module and the microcontroller has been done over a serial port for simplicity. And this has happened now for a majority of, I don't know, 40, 50 years, perhaps. Now, as you can imagine, over so many years, there's been an accretion of protocols and languages and command sets. And while there is some sort of a standardization around what is called the AT command set, this whole universe of commands have grown wildly into such a huge variety of commands that makes it really, really hard for the developer to actually wrap their heads around it and utilize efficiently. As a second problem, the customer will need to still write code for the microcontroller, for the intelligent element in the solution. And this code can be complex, especially the part that deals with the cloud. Now, don't get me wrong. In AWS, we have created a number of libraries that we provide for free to our customers to make it easy to use all the services that we provide, you know, the device shadow, the over-the-air updates, localization. But all these protocols just add up to the complexity eventually. It just piles up on the number of things that a poor developer has to kind of wrap their heads around and master. And then a third step is that in order to connect to the cloud, it's not just enough to collect the data and throw it at the cloud to get access securely to the customer account where you want to store this data. You need to make sure that that access is done securely. So every device needs to have its own configuration. We use certificate-based security. So every device must have a unique certificate that provides access to the correct account. And then encryption must be used. And so that we guarantee that end-to-end -end the data cannot be snooped or stolen by any other malevolent agent along the way. So as you can imagine, this adds more complexity. We call it the problem with provisioning, the problem with updating those certificates. It just adds up to the pile of things that a poor developer of IoT solutions has to master and the number of problems they have to overcome. Okay, so talk to me about AWS IoT Express Link. Yes. So AWS IoT Express Link really goes after those major three points there. That wild accretion of protocol over protocol, command set extensions and whatnot. We took the liberty after so many years to actually start with a clean page. And we looked at the problem, not just as connecting a device wirelessly over Wi-Fi, but we took it all the way to the cloud. So we optimized a human readable subset of commands that we made standardized with ExpressLink. We call the ExpressLink command set. And this one is so small that it can be, I claim it's about a dozen commands with some variants. But in a dozen commands, you have everything that you need to communicate to your account in the cloud securely. And so this contrast, you know, a dozen versus a thousand that's the kind of level of comparison that, that you have here. And so huge simplification, you know, freeing up a lot of developers' mind to actually tackle the real problems in the application, not just dealing with legacy. The second problem that we addressed was the number of different services that we provide in the cloud, each adding its own protocols, each adding its own requirements and special ways to access and retrieve data, access and send and receive commands. And so for those, we actually took the liberty to put in the communication module, in the ExpressLink module, reintegrate already all those services. So if you want to use Shadow, the module already knows how to help you achieve that. If you want to have an over-the-air update, the module does that for you out of the box. You don't need to write a single line of code for that. If you want to do localization, if you want to do device health monitoring and, and updating, that is also automatic. At the flip of a bit, you can have those services just enabled for you. 
and the microcontroller and so the developer that has to write the code for the microcontroller is going to free up a bunch of time in their development schedule so it's going to make the whole project shorter less expensive less risky because all the code is rebuilt in the device and so there's no tentative there's no let's try and see if it works it guaranteed to work out of the box and then problem number three, the security. So connecting securely to the account in the cloud is no small feat. And we use certificate-based security, which means that every single device has to have unique certificates, unique identifying numbers. And for the over-the-air updates and for all sorts of other activities, it turns out actually we have to inject inside a typical device as many as five different secrets. And with Expressing, we actually dictated that those will be shipped already with the device. So we took that problem again away from the shoulders of the developer or the ODM, the builder, together with uBlocks. We do that already. And when uBlocks ships a module, a Nora W2 module, those certificates are already there. The crypto, the logic is already there. And so the secure connection to the customer account is guaranteed out of the box. All right. So, Magnus, what is the difference between ExpressLink and other software? Many module manufacturers provide some kind of software running on the module. So I would like to explain, you know, the differences between the software we have called Uconnect Express and the ExpressLink and how they differentiate. So on the left, you see a host microcontroller connected to a module with Uconnect Express. And on the right, you have the equivalence with the ExpressLink module. And one difference is the number of 80 commands. For Uconnect Express software, you have about 130 commands. And for ExpressLink, you only have about 15. For ExpressLink, these commands have been designed to be intuitive and easy to use. Also, learning and implementing 15 commands is a lot faster and requires less effort than 130. Another difference is module compatibility. For the Uconnect Express software, you have compatibility between short-range products such as Wi-Fi modules and Bluetooth modules. But with ExpressLink, you have compatibility between Wi-Fi and cellular, so different technologies. And having compatibility between these different technologies is a very strong proposition if you want to create variants of the product. For example, you may want to build an outdoor variant where there is no Wi-Fi, so you have to rely on cellular connectivity but you also want to do a pure indoor variant with only Wi-Fi. You can do this now without doing any changes to the applications because it's the same 80 command set. Uconnect Express is cloud agnostic, but it requires more to do on the application side to set up the configuration. ExpressLink, however, is designed for AWS clouds specifically. So in a sense, you trade flexibility for simplicity but if you already are or plan to be an AWS customer, then the Nora W2 module could be the right choice for you. Supporting 130 commands, of course, it gives you more possibilities of using the capabilities of the chip. But if you only need to send data, or Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and connect to AWS, you get all this simplicity. Then the ExpressLink is the obvious choice. Like Lucia mentioned, by doing this, you not only get the built-in AWS services, such as Device Shadow and Device Defender, you have easy access to all the other AWS services. And finally, with the Nora W2 ExpressLink module, you don't have to load it with certificate and keys to connect to AWS, because we have already done it for you. So talking about 80 commands, this is an example showing the strength and simplicity of the ExpressLink version. On the left, you see the manual for the 80 commands of a cellular module, a uBlocks cellular module. This manual is over 1,000 pages long. Just imagine the time it takes to read and to understand how to use these properly. On the right, you see 18 simple but yet powerful 80 commands of the ExpressLink. So what do you think are the biggest benefits of this module? So Nora W2 is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy module that's easy to integrate both from a hardware perspective and from a, a software perspective. So the module itself is small, it's only 10 by 14 millimeters, so it can easily be fit into many designs. And you only need to integrate between three and five hardware pins, depending on what functionality you need. And from a software perspective, you have the 80 commands, which are basically text strings that you send over a serial interface. Then you have the security, all sensitive data, such as the dimension certificates and keys, are stored in a secure enclave and encrypted storage on the module. 
all communication is encrypted and module to cloud authentication is mutual. And what I mean by that is when a module connects to AWS IoT Core, IoT knows that this is an authentic module and the module knows that it connects to the correct server on IoT Core. As Lucia briefly touched upon, the product manufacturing process is also simplified. This is because the certificate and keys allowing the module to connect to AWS are provisioned and in Ublox production. This means the customer doesn't have to take this step in his own production. And finally, it's easily managed. Through AWS Cloud, it's possible to deploy software updates, both for the ExpressLink software itself, but also for the application running on the connected host microcontroller to help the product with remote configuration and monitoring. So Magnus, we also need to talk about certification as well, right? Right, it's an important topic. So in addition to making things secure and easy to implement, we also want to reduce cost and delays for our customers. So this is why we certify our modules globally. We not only do the larger certifications such as FCC and CE, but we also do country specific certifications to cover as much as possible of the global market. All right. So if my audience wants to get started using this module, do you guys have a development kit? Absolutely. The process of prototyping ExpressLink is very simple. First, you need to, like you say, you need to get hold of a development kit, which, for example, can be found at the larger global distributors. The USB NORA W256 AWS development kit is in a USB stick form factor and can easily be used with most PCs. The kit includes the NORA W2 module, and it has an integrated antenna supporting Wi-Fi 4 and Bluetooth LE5. So once it's connected to your PC, you will find the COM port for it, and you can connect to it with a terminal application of your choice. And then in the, in the terminal application, you can start typing AT commands and send to the module. So no coding is required to try this out. To get some data to the cloud, you only need to do three things. Set up the Wi-Fi that the module should use. So you do that once, you provide the SSID and the password, and then you use the connect A to command, which will connect it not only to the Wi-Fi access point, but also to AWS cloud. And then you can start sending data. That's all it takes. Fantastic. All right. So can we look at a typical use case for this module as well? I'd like to jump in and offer one example. I wouldn't say it's typical because, you know, these modules we're talking about are really versatile. So they can be used in the widest range of applications out there that require, let's say, low power, wireless connectivity, connection to a cloud account. There's no end to the number of use cases. But I picked one that I thought was kind of interesting for this presentation. And I'll illustrate to you an example in medical asset monitoring and, and remote management. The picture on the right, don't be fooled, uh, looks like something very complex, very powerful, very big and expensive. Doesn't have to be probably a ventilator from what I'm looking at. It, it was a pretty picture, but a typical medical asset can, be, can vary a lot from a very small pulse oximeter to a giant device like that or a much more complex imaging portable, probably imaging machinery. What they have, though, all in common is that they are all complex things, uh, for sure, because that industry is very heavily regulated, as you can imagine. And because they are so expensive and difficult and complex machines, managing their inventory tend to be an extremely critical task for the clinic or the hospital where this is employed. And so controlling that inventory, optimizing its use, you know, is critical to keep the cost in check. Sometimes in not knowing where the device is or not having it available at the right time can be a matter of life and death. So you don't want to play with that. You got to be sure that if you're monitoring, if you're tracking, you're sure where it is and you're sure you can reach it. So on top of that, these complex devices need to be recalibrated or reconfigured depending on the type of use or even moving them from one location to another. And so it is not just tracking, but it is more than that. There's also a remote management and a reconfiguration aspect of it. So it is a bi-directional kind of thing. I'll illustrate with a few, with a very simple block diagram, just a few slides here to show you how this can work. So typical here would be that this device needs to get this configurability. And nowadays, you know, we have this magical wand in our head with this personal mobile devices, you know, be a tablet or a phone. And there's this expectation that everything can be controlled with our phones, right? 
Well, Bluetooth, in particular Bluetooth Low Energy, is a great common denominator there. Basically, all these mobile devices talk BLE. And so it's very nice to take new devices, new medical devices, or retrofit existing devices and give them this ability to communicate over BLE with the professional, with the doctor, the nurse, magic wand, so to speak. And the second aspect is then, of course, yes, to connect it to the cloud, you want to get this remote configuration, you want to send the telemetry data into the cloud. This will be processed later, and it should happen wirelessly because, well, there are enough cables and wires around these medical devices already. A little NORA W2 module there, an express link module, tiny as it is, 10 by 14 millimeter, did you say, Magnus? That is tiny, and so it can fit inside the bigger devices, as you can see in the picture there, but it can fit also inside the pulse oximeter and kind of disappear from your site. So really being embedded. And because they can do BLE and Wi-Fi, they can fully cover both type of connectivity to the left and right of the medical device. The beauty is also that the little development kit that Ublox has developed, it's more than a development kit. It's a little USB key, a little USB dongle. And so it is actually quite attractive, honestly speaking, almost as a finished product because it can be used to literally retrofit a device or as long as the device has a USB port, we can now enable a legacy device and provide it with this kind of connectivity without having to break the box, which also means putting your hands back into all those certifications and those tests that are required for every device that is applied in the medical field. So quite interesting how that little module, that little dongle can be so much more than just a development kit for a quick test. So what do you see are the biggest benefits here? in this use case, but common to many others, what happens is that we get the NORA W2 modules adding connectivity both as a new solution for new products that are being designed now. So you can plan on embedding that tiny little module into a new design and it's going to take so little space and so few pins. I think Magnus mentioned this already. And so it's very versatile, very easy to use for new designs as much as it is also useful and beneficial for retrofitting. And so for taking existing expensive large inventory of devices and make them trackable, remotely controlled using the dongle example. And then once the connection to the cloud is provided, because it is a secure connection, because all the data flows end-to-end encrypted, this is also now fitting exactly the medical application, you know, HIPAA requirements, and so it fits nicely in that solution. So the end result for the customer is that there's an improved availability of the medical device. There's an optimized use of that device inventory. So if you look at the customer as the hospital or the clinic utilizing this material, And this can expedite or remove or reduce the maintenance cost because you can provide software updates for the device via the cloud. And so you can ensure that updates are provided timely so you can be conforming to the compliance and regulatory requirements. Fantastic. Now, Magnus, are there any other use cases you can share? There is. I also have a use case. I I call it save on your energy bill. So it would help private persons and consumers, and maybe the product manufacturer. To make this use case make sense, I I need to give you some context. So many heat pumps works by reusing heated air, converting it to cold air. In this process, energy is released, which is then used to heat up water in the heat pump. However, this process requires additional energy that is taken from the energy grid. And as we all know, this energy costs money, especially in Europe. The heated water is then used to heat the house or for normal consumption. Now the idea with this use case is to make this heat pump a bit smarter. This can be made smarter by connecting it to a power exchange. For example, the pan-European region uses a power exchange called NordPole. The power exchange provides a spot price on energy either according to a day ahead or an intraday scheme. And this information can be fetched through APIs from their cloud service. In addition to connectivity, In the process of making this machine smarter, we would also have to add some more intelligent software so that the heat pump can control the water heating based on the current price. This means the pump would know when to heat the water when the price is low, which would reduce the energy cost. We also want to send some telemetry to our cloud backend where we could also get the new software for the pump. The new software could also aid pump manufacturing in offering additional services or features if we only had some connectivity. 
For new heat pumps, as currently in development, we can simply integrate the Nora W2 module to easily get connectivity and access to AWS Cloud. But we also want to support existing heat pumps. And most heat pumps, even a bit older ones, they have a USB port. We could then provide the ExpressLink connectivity either via dedicated USB dongle or USB development kit as a product instead and use that. Since Nora W2 and ExpressLink supports both Bluetooth Low Energy, we could even create an app for the end customer for configuration and information purposes. To summarize this, with Nora W2 and AWS IoT ExpressLink, it's easy to add connectivity to both new and old products and decrease the value proposition of those products. For this use case in particular, the end customer reduces his energy bill and the heat pump manufacturer has successfully created a more attractive product. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Magnus. Thank you. And thank you, Lucho. Thanks for the opportunity. Always a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from uBlocks. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. If you can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.